Another useful fact about differentiable functions is that if you have a differentiable function and you have some sort of scalar value, a real number c, then that scalar times the function is also differentiable. And if you take the derivative of that scalar value times the function, you simply get the function's derivative multiplied by the scalar. Ultimately what this means is that scalars can be factored out and you can take the derivative of things that you recognize. Specifically if you have a polynomial and you have, you know, instead of you know, x squared, you have 3x squared, then you could, you could pull the 3 out, take the x squared derivative like normal, and then multiply 3 at the end. So let's take a look at some examples. This is 5x cubed. So we know that the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared by the power rule. We bring the 3 down and we subtract 1 from the power. That's how we get 3x squared. So by by doing that first, we then can multiply the 5 by its derivative to get the final value of 15x squared. The next one is a variation on the power uh, on the yeah on the power rule. We have 2 over x. Now remember that a, probably a different and maybe easier way to write that would be 2. Well, let me get a better marker. Would be. 2 times x to the negative 1. So again, by the power rule, we, we bring the power down and subtract 1 from it. So we have negative 1 times x to the negative 2. So these multiply together to get negative 2, and x to the negative 2 is 1 over x squared, because remember, x to the negative n is 1 over x to the positive n. So if we keep on rolling, if this, this is f of t here, which is still the same thing, we're just not using f of x, we're using f of t. We have 4t squared over 5. Well, probably a better way to do that one, or a more convenient way, would be to write that as 4 fifths t squared. So we can pull that 4 fifths out, we can take the derivative of t squared, we pull down the power and subtract 1 from it, so now we have 2t to the 1, which gives us 8 fifths t. As we keep going, we have 2 square root of x. And remember that the square root can be written as x to the 1 half. So dy dx here is 2 times, bring down that power, 1 half, subtract 1 from 1 half, you get negative 1 half. So then we use this result to flip it, and we use you know, the fact that x to the 1 half is the square root of x. So those cancel, and we're left with 1 over the square root of x. Next, we have y equals 1 over 2 cube root x squared. OK, so that one's a little trickier. So what we can do first is bring it as 1 half and then we have 1 over the cube root of x squared. But remember that the cube root is, and you can write that as a power of 1 third, so that's like 1 half 1 over x squared to the 1 third, so that's really 1 half over, or times 1 over x to the 2 thirds. And then we can rewrite that as 1 half x to the negative 2 thirds. So by doing that, we bring down the power, negative 2 thirds. We subtract 1 from negative 2 thirds to get negative 5 thirds. The 2's cancel. So we have negative 1 over 3. And then by, by following the inverse of this logic, we get this as the cube root of x to the fifth. And that's y prime. Finally, we have f of x equals negative 3x over 2. What we're going to do is just bring out that negative 3 halves. The derivative of x is 1. So the answer is just negative 3 halves. And ultimately, what you're finding here is for the constant rule, we just factor out the constant to the front. We don't deal with it, and we multiply it back in when we're done.